Good morning and welcome to this After Work Special Edition with a uh, Weekend Edition. Uh, I am Colter Reed. I'm your host. I am here to help you get the day to day out of the way so you can stop chasing the dream and start living the dream. So, what are we doing today? I bought something uh, a couple of weeks ago. I started thinking about this purchase, oh, sometime last year because I realized that. Um, I realized just that with the amount of time that I spend on a keyboard, you know, at, at the computer using a keyboard, I was starting to become aware of the number of times that I had to step back from the keyboard, from from the keyboard, from the computer, and just rest, you know, my wrists, yeah, you know, just stretch, try to get the mobility back, try to get the all the bones back in order, and I realized that. Uh, I started thinking about just how unergonomic most keyboards are, because when you're sitting there at the keyboard, you've got to, you know, you've, you've got your hands right here in front of you, kind of, kind of angled in a little bit, and it was just really awkward. I realized how uncomfortable it was becoming after a while. So I started thinking about looking. So I started looking at ergonomic keyboards. And I went down a real rabbit hole with this. I absolutely admit this. I went down a rabbit hole. I have used ergonomic keyboards before, like nice and contoured and sculpted and all that. So I'm not a complete stranger to them. But I wanted to see what was available now. Um, what does a modern ergonomic keyboard look like? And I went down the rabbit hole and started looking at some really fun and interesting keyboards. And I, I, I had one, I was kind of looking, I was, I was kind of looking at it, evaluating it. I thought, you know, this looks really nice. It's a lot of money, but um, it's a really good product. I don't know if you can hear it, but it just started raining. Um, hopefully that's not too loud coming up through on the mic. But uh, then, yeah, about two weeks ago, uh, had a little bit, you know, had a little bit of a head cold, didn't have a fully functioning prefrontal cortex. I went ahead and placed the order, bought the keyboard, and it's here. It's here. So the first surprise, uh, it. UPS dropped it off. I, I could have sworn that they, they sent me a FedEx tracking number. So uh, let's see. Let's see here. Let's switch over. Right. Okay, let's get this thing up. So first off, first thing to notice is just how big this isn't. I mean, here's the magic keyboard um, that I that I typically use, and that is that's already a small keyboard. That's a very minimalist keyboard. Um, this is not much bigger. Let's let's crack it up and take a look at it. So just grab the box opener here. Just Amazon Basics, nothing fancy. In fact, it's a little bit weird. Oops. Poor desktop. I don't know. I think the shape of it's a little bit weird, but I'm getting used to it. Okay, it is definitely well wrapped. So when you order this keyboard, they tell you that it's going to take up to two weeks to ship. <laughs> Got an overlay up here that I don't need anymore. Let's get rid of that. It's going to take up to two weeks to ship because they make these in batches. But once it shipped, they overnighted it. So that was kind of nice. Wasn't expecting that. I didn't have to do that, but. It's nice that they did. And wow, yeah, water is not getting in this. Probably wants to put the knife down and just tear, but well, this material doesn't tear well. So it's all right, just keep working at it here. Always cut towards yourself when you're working with sharp objects. All right. Hey, there we go. ZSA, or as all of their videos say, ZSA, they're an international company. All right. Okay. There's some recycling. All right. So there it is, Moonlander. ZSA Moonlander. I'm gonna to try to say ZSA, because why not? All right. Nice box. Where does it open? I always like a box where you can't quite tell where the seams are. That's a sign of quality and marksmanship. Oh, open it up. Thank you. 
Thank you for supporting us. Get started at ZSAIO 101. We'll check that out in just a minute. Okay, so everything ships in a travel case. That's nice. That's kind of cool. Neoprene material feels like, feels quality, doesn't feel cheap, feels decent. Not in the ne in the neoprene case is the uh, keyboard pull the keycap pulling tool. Uh, one of the things I like about this keyboard, better not or for better or for worse, um, it is extremely com comfortable. I, I hope it's comfortable. It's extremely customizable, and yeah, if you want to swap out the keycaps, if you want to swap out the switches that are inside of it, we'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, yeah, they give you a tool. You can just pop them. Pump right up. It's designed to do that. You're not hacking anything. Um, okay, so well, I like the little letter icon. It's kind of fun. All right. And the rain intensifies. So let's open this up. Move the keyboard out of the way. And okay, so tucked in the middle, we have a USB C to USB C cable with uh, a USB-C and USB-A adapter in case you need one of those to plug it into your computer. Let's unwrap this, Let's see how long it is. Oh, that's a good six feet. Probably two meters. Yeah, that's more than six feet, that's like two meters. Okay, that's that's good, that's good. Let's see, I don't need that, I've got a Mac Studio. I need the USB-A adapter. Set that aside for a second. Okay, and here is half the keyboard. This is the right half of the keyboard. <laughs> so this is one of the features about this keyboard that I'm actually looking forward to. It is, it's not just a split keyboard, it's actually two half keyboards. Oops, there's drop the cable on the floor. Okay, so this is the T, this is the TRRS cable that connects the two halves of the keyboards together. I like that they used it's a, an industry standard cable for that. Anything else in here? Silica gel, throw that away. More silica gel, throw that away. All right, that's it. Okay, so this is the, the carrying case. Oh, comes with an Allen wrench, uh, comes with a hex key. Um, yes, because, oh, and there's a nice little travel pocket for the hex key. Um, that's good because I understand that in order to, for some of the customizations that you'll be doing regularly, um, a hex key is advised. So there's that, there's the tool. Um, let's start taking the plastic off. So one of the things, yes, yeah, one of the things I like about th this design and I'm hoping it works out well. Like I said, I haven't tried this. I have done, um, split keyboard typing before when I was in junior high. Um, they were in the transitional period where you could get, or you could take either, you, you could take typewriting or keyboarding, either one, if you wanted to learn how to touch type, which I highly recommend. It is a very valuable productivity skill. Learn to touch type, learn the keyboard shortcuts. Um, do it, learn how to do as much as possible without having to take your hand off the keyboard and go to the mouse or track that. Uh, so when I was in junior high, you could take either typewriting or keyboarding. Um, either one, you were covering the same material. They didn't want you to take both. You couldn't get credit for both. So I took typewriting in seventh grade on a actual mechanical typewriter. It was lots of fun. Um, no undo. You made a mistake. You got to live with it. So you, you, accuracy is important, even if that means you slow down a little bit until you get proficient. That's fine. When I was in ninth grade, I convinced them to let me do um, uh, to let me take the keyboarding class, even though I'd already taken typewriting. And the condition was I wasn't going to be using the QWERTY layout on the computers, Apple II GSs. I was gonna, I, I used the Dvorak layout, so I learned how to do that. And let me tell you, when you're doing QWERTY typing exercises, like LOL, LOL, which is supposed to be one of the weak fingers having to move back and forth on the Dvorak layout. Those are on two different hands. You can bust those out with incredible speed. It's kind of cheating. It's a, it's, it's a cheat code. Um, but one of the things I would do playing around is I would grab one of the one of the keyboards off of the computer next to me that wasn't being used and just plug its ADB cable into one, into the other keyboard. And I would sit there at the, at the, 
you know, I'd sit there typing with one hand on each keyboard. It was kind of fun. Um, I do actually still use two keyboards um, for kind of technical reasons. I have two displays set up. I think you can kind of see that when I go to the desk shot. Here, nope, you can't. Adjust the Q. There you go. Now you can see. Monitor one, monitor two. So when, um, yeah, so I have one keyboard in front of each display. This display will, uh, I've got it set up so that one cable, I unplug it from the Mac Studio, I can plug it into a laptop and I have a desktop class workstation for the laptop. Um, and so every now and then I will, you know, yearn for the good old days where I could do two-handed typing um, or two keyboard typing. And it mostly works kind of, but USB does not, USB keyboards do not send key signals the same way that ADB keyboards did. And basically, if you hold down the shift key on one keyboard, you do not get a capital letter on the other keyboard. You have to hold modifier keys um, on the same keyboard. Seems like a step backwards, but not many people try doing this. So the Moonlander is a, is a full split keyboard. And they encourage you to put these shoulder width apart. So you're not, you know, not replicating the, you know, the, the, the customary keyboard um, posture because it's not good for you. It's uncomfortable. Okay, so there's a couple extra switches here. Um, there's an extra J, F, and uh, blank key, I guess. Um, the F and J keys that ship on the lay on the layout, they have the little nubs so that you can tell where your tell when your fingers are in the, in the right position. Um, if you don't want the nubs, you've got these. One of the reasons why you might not want the nubs, either you're just sensitive to to tactile sen sensations, or if you have taken the keys off of your keyboard and rearranged them to another layout, like Dvorak or Colmac, then the bumps are in the wrong place at that point. So they have bumpless, they give you bumpless uh, F and J keys, which is kind of nice. I don't have any plans currently to switch this over to a Dvorak layout, one learning curve at a time. Uh, I still can do Dvorak. It takes me a few minutes to shift gears. Anyway, uh, they do encourage you, instead of having the two halves of it close together, because you still have to kind of turn your wrists in for that. Um, they do encourage you to set these shoulder width apart and work on them like this. So I, I, I am looking forward to that. It's one of the things, things I'm excited about. Okay, uh, I'll start unfolding these. They come with, it comes with uh, integrated wrist, wrist rests. So, oh, oh, that is nice. That's surprising when it's. It's not a squishy material. Most of the ergonomic wrist rests that you see are a squishy material that you rest on. I actually can't stand that material. That's why I don't use one. Um, I'm not even a fan of of uh, of uh, mouse pads typically, just because I don't I don't like the the feel of them. So let's un this let's undo those and oh. Oh, this is this is this is gonna be fun. You know, it'll take me a while to figure out exactly the position I want to have them in. You know, have them. You know, how how do I have these angled? You know, what's what's best? What's you know what what is the natural posture here? Um, we do a lot of stuff where we have a very closed and hunched posture. Typing on the computer is one is one. Uh, driving, we do the same thing. With the hands down on the steering wheel and seats tend to push our shoulders forward. So, you know, roll your shoulders back, open your chest up every chance you get uh, is good for you. One of the other things that is interesting about this keyboard, and again, I'm curious to see how this works, is, I forget the term for it now, ortholinear? Columnar is one, there's two words. Uh, I, think it's, I think the other is ortholinear. So if you look at a regular keyboard, here. See how all of the columns, quote unquote columns of letters are slanted? Well, there's a reason for that. It's, it's historical. And that's because back in back in the day when they made typewriters, um, 
there were mechanical reasons why everything had to be off shifted because each key would trigger a mechanical re response. You hit a key, it would swing a lever. And so you had to offset, they had to offset the keys so that it would match up with where the little levers were. We used to have one of these typewriters at home. It, it was it was fun. Um, you know, typing along and watching the little hands fly up and hit the hit the ribbon against the paper. And if you got typing too fast, you know, one would go up and another one would go up after it and they get stuck and it would jam and you had to you had, you had to clear it. It was fun. But this is something that has continued with us um, ever since. Keyboards are still designed with this angling because that's what we're used to. That's what everybody does. And But there are some companies that are doing the, these, this ortholinear has something to do with, well, this is the direction that your fingers extend. Your fingers extend straight. Your fingers don't extend at this angle. So they, they put the keys in, in a nice column order. I'm excited to see how, how that feels because I know there are, as a consequence of this, I do not touch type with using all of the, the correct fingers, correct fingers, I'm not doing it right, correct fingers on the correct keys. For example, the, the C key, uh, you're supposed to hit that with your middle finger on the left hand. I don't, I bring the, the index finger down just because my hands are already tilted. I don't know. It's not comfortable. Uh, B is also one that I come over and I hit with the wrong, with index finger on the wrong hand. So curious to see what sort of things that clears up. If nothing else, I'm gonna stop doing that because the B key is on the left hand keyboard. And so if these are on opposite sides of my desk, it's gonna fix that bad habit real quick. In their documentation, they do tell you that you are going to discover a lot of bad habits that you've had uh, from, le from learning to type on a regular keyboard. Okay, let's plug it in. Let's see what it does. Let's see how this one works. Okay, so here's the TRS cable, TRRS cable. Let's punch the microphone while I straighten that out. Okay. Connect the two halves together so that we have a full keyboard. Get my current keyboard out of the way now. Let's see. Here's the USB C connection. That USB C there. USB C. I want to reach around to the back of the neck, so I'll plug it. Hello, what key did I hit? That was not a key I wanted to hit. There we go. And there we go. Ah, it lights up. <laughs> it lights up. That was another one of the fun things I wanted. Because it's, you can, oh, I need to clear it. The keyboard assistant pop up. Yes, you can see it doing a rainbow dance. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, so th this cable needs to relax a little bit. It's still straight out of the box. It has some built up tension that it needs to release. It needs a nice day at the spa. But okay, I'll get that out of the way. And <laughs> the RGB lights are completely customizable. Um, oh, so right, keyboard assistant. Unfortunately, I'm not set up to actually to screen share this. Keyboard setup assistants. Okay, basically, you just have to hit the Z key and. Oh, what's the key on the what's the key on the the right shift key? Uh that would be slash. So I'm gonna cheat. It is an ANSI keyboard. I looked that up yesterday. Um they walk you through they walk you through this. Um so it is an ANSI keyboard. I'm gonna cheat. And done. And okay, I should be ready to start typing. Oh, that was something else that I should have done. Um I need a notepad. I need a notepad. One second while I get a notepad. While I get a note open. Okay. Forgot about that. I forgot I was going to want to do this. Okay. 
screen share. Yep, the window is sharing. It's all nice and small on the side because I use Stage Manager. And no, I don't want current display. I want notes. I want the new note. Well, that's not the new note. Interesting. Why is that not? Why didn't that switch? I should switch over to the new note. Okay, that's not going to work. Let's bring this back and we will go to um, what's a web page that I can just type things in on? Um, this is interesting. I never just open up a web. I, I, Type in the or the URL bar, but I never open a web browser just to go type something. Um, just want a blank piece of paper. What can I do this? Oh, can I do this in iCloud? Oh, I'd have to sign into iCloud. Okay, we're just gonna do. The, oh, you know what we're gonna do? Okay, we're just gonna type in the URL in the URL field. That's all we're gonna do. Okay. All right. This is the first I've typed. This is the first I've typed anything on the keyboard, and I'm going to swing this over here a little bit. <laughs> you really do feel like you're 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 in. I saw someone describe it. You feel like you're flying in the Enterprise. I do not object to that description. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, this is no, not Dvorak, Coulter, not Dvorak. Oh, Backspace. Where's Backspace? Ah, there's Backspace. Okay. <laughs> One of the thumb buttons. Um, sure. Apple.com slash store. Where's enter, the enter key? Ah, I found, I found keys. I found keys. Okay, that was surprisingly awkward. Um, wow. And I want to just do, I like, where's command? I don't know where the command key is yet. <laughs> All right. Go up here instead of typing URL. Um, Okay, that was not the space bar. Wow, there is habit for that would be for. Okay, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to customize that. I need I need the space bar underneath my right thumb. <laughs> AMD. Oh, because it's not ortho because it's ortholinear. I. I knew there was going to be a learning curve to this. I'm looking forward to it. I embrace that. Well, I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm ready for it. Um, they say <laughs> I am terrible. Holy cow. I was right. I have broken my brain. Um, I'm so used to, I'm so used to angling my hands. Um, that go our father's rot. No. Oh, wow. Be over here now, right? Brought. <laughs> oh, this is this is gonna take time to learn. Fortunately, they, <laughs> they they even include a typing practice package with it. Okay, that was that went about like I thought it would, <laughs> which is why I thought, why not? Let's 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 turn the camera on and do it live. Okay, so uh, ZSA one hundred and one. Um, okay, congratulations. You're the now the proud owner of a new Moonlander. You only use traditional keyboards, it's going to seem a bit intimidating. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, but intimidating is the right word for it. What's in the box? Keyboard, both tabs. Thank you for not sending me half a keyboard. Um, although one of I, th I think it's interesting, one of the things that they changed from their original keyboard, um, their original keyboard, the USB connection to connect to the computer was on the right half of the keyboard. For the Moonlander, their most advanced uh, ergonomic keyboard, they put it on the left-hand side so that if you're a gamer and you only want half of the keyboard, you can unplug the right half. The left half is still connected to the computer, and there you go. So, wow, this is going to take some time to, to learn. Um... Yeah, 315 millimeter TR or S cable to connect the two halves together, USB type C, key puller, extra key caps, a hex key, and a carrying case because yeah, you're you're gonna want to take this the, this with you. If you you know 
take it with you into the office. Now, the nice thing, as customizable as this is, I think we'll get to this in a minute, as customizable as it is, all of the changes go in firmware. So there's nothing you have to configure on the computer. Once the keyboard's configured, you can plug it into any computer, and, and there you go. So connect to the keyboard is simple. Connect to the halves together. We did that. Um, operating system setup. OK, if you're using Windows or Linux, just plug the keyboard in. Mac OS, there's a couple of steps to go through. That's just the automatic keyboard identification that pops up. You have to hit the Z key. There you go, ZSA. Um, the Z key and the slash key so that you can recognize it as an ANSI keyboard. But so that's all it is. It takes a few seconds. You just have to be expecting it. Um, positioning the keyboard. You want to avoid having the two pieces too close together. We did that. I'm looking forward to them being shoulder width apart. This is going to be fun. Um, ensuring that the home row aligns with your fingers. Your posture should be completely relaxed. I saw somebody, uh, I, I saw someone do a review. They said if you wanted to, there are, yeah, there, there's there's mounting holes on the bot on the bottom of this. Uh, you could actually like position the key position the two halves of the keyboard on the, the sides of your chair. You mount it to your chair. You have to figure out something to do about the cable that runs in between them, because yeah, you need to get in and out of the chair as well. But yeah, you, you can position it wherever you want. Whatever wherever it feels good for you. That's the that's the important part. Note the angle of rotation to both halves relative of both halves relative to your body. They don't have to be straight. They probably shouldn't be straight. You can angle them outwards slightly so your wrist does not have to flex in any direction at all. I expect they're basically going to be aligned with my forearm. Whatever direction my forearm is pointing, that's the direction to the keys. Um, at this point, without typing, you should feel completely relaxed and natural. And I love that they have little robot hands um, demonstrating the posture on this. That's kind of funny. I like it. Pro tip, start flat. Um, the tenting. Yeah, when it's time, I had to tent your board. Let me, sh let me show you the tenting real quick, how this works. Uh, back to the desk. OK, so each half of the keyboard here has, has these, uh, yeah, has these legs on it. So you can, you can not only stand this up to variable heights, um, and then you need to tighten it down. And yep, that's a hex, and that's hex two. So both of the, these both take the hex, uh, the hex key that they sh ship you. Um, but this also bends down as well. So you can have. So yeah, if you want to have it not sitting flat on your desk and actually accommodate the natural curve, uh, you can do that. I wonder what it would be like to take this to kind of the natural extreme. They have ergonomic mice that you're using, you're positioning your hand like this and moving the mouse around like this instead of like this, because it is more comfortable. I think 57 degree angle is optimal. Um, and that, that that's interesting. I'm curious to try one of, one of those. Uh, I, I like my magic track, I like my magic trackpad a lot. Multi-touch gestures are very, very useful there. So, uh, I'm curious about trying it. It would be interesting to take the two halves of this keyboard and mount them vertical. Like once I get used to it and I can use the keyboard completely without having to look at it at all, what would it be like to just have it here and type vertically like that? Would that be more comfortable or is that actually going to, might have to actuate your, the adductors on your forearms too much. Abductors, adductors. Um, so it's curious. Um, I do look forward to seeing, you know, what does feel more comfortable. I think it's going to be somewhere around here. But they say to get started with, just leave it flat. Pro tip, don't make yourself adjust to too much at once. Get used to the cut. You get used to the the keyboard, and then go to town playing with it. All right. So. Yeah, starting, yeah, start typing. They run you through the de default keyboard layout. I did not get the version of the keyboard that has completely blank keys. If you really, really want a very minimalist setup, you can do that. You can get 
Uh, you, you can get your Moonlander with blank keycaps. They have little windows on them, like the, the side keys, um, so that you don't have to... Actually, I don't know why you would want to do that. But apparently some people do. It's a thing. So you can order it with nothing but blank keycaps. So, but I, I, I'm not that extreme. I like being able to look at the keyboard and seeing where things are when I need to. So I, I am... I'm sticking with labeled keycaps for now. Uh, there is there's the default layout uh, of the keyboard. You can see kind of why I was getting confused. The, the the default layout that it shifts with out of the box. Here's your space key over on the left. This isn't responding, is it? Okay, it's not. This is not a live preview. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a space key backspace. One of your command keys, here's the other one over reachable from your pinky. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that it's not in the same position for each hand. Okay. Um, option, tab, return. Yeah. Escape is not up in the corner. Uh, punctuation, like the, bra the bracket keys are down here. Equal is over on the left side. It's on the wrong side of the keyboard now. This is going to throw me like nothing else. Um, I mean, yeah, I learned how to, how to touch type when I was in junior high, but it wasn't until I really started programming full-time that I really learned how to touch type. Because when you're a programmer, you use the entire keyboard. You know where all the punctuation are, all the special characters, what Shift-7 does, what Shift-3 does. You use all of the characters and symbols. I have a lot of experience that I'm going to have to unwind in order to use this. Uh, in fact, one of, the, one of the things about this keyboard that was almost a deal killer was the fact that it does not have an inverted T um, arrows. Just you know, over there in the corner, inverted T, there you go. Um, up and down or over here on the right half, left and right are on the left half. And it looks like there's another left and right split between the two halves. So yeah, this is gonna be a learning curve. <laughs> I'm, I am going to break my brain. Um, another feature that this has is you have different layers. So if you push this key, it activate. you can tap it to get a back tick. You can hold it and it activates layer one. Before we go to layer one, this is something else I'm excited about for, for this keyboard, is each key can do multiple things depending on whether you tap it, hold it down, double tap it, or tap and hold. You can do four different things. So for example, do you really need a separate caps lock, a separate caps lock key? Or can you combine your caps lock and shift into a single key? You hold down the shift key, or you hold down the key and type another letter, it's shift. But if you just tap it, it goes in, it becomes caps lock. So, you know, that can free up keys to do other things. Um, and also the layers, you can program this with up to 36 different layers. And what that is, is you hit a modifier key, you change which layer you're on, and now some of the keys start doing different things. So like, so here you, you go to layer one, you go to layer one, and now you've got a bunch of the symbols that I'm going to be using every day. And uh, a, a, a number keypad over on the right, that's that's actually nice. Okay, you've got function keys across the top here, cool. Uh, layer two, when you go up, um, this looks like media controls, uh, you know, your, your sound volume, and browser back key, okay, that's kinda cool. Uh, your music mode, was, that's not last, what is that? That, that, you can move, you can move the mouse? With it. Oh, oh, I've got to try that. How do you get to how do you get layer two? Layer two, you hold down the semicolon. Okay, hold down the semicolon and it goes to layer two. Okay. Um, and then not WAS one, it's one to the right of WAS. Okay. Does that work? Semicolon and <laughs> it does work. I can control the mouse with I control the mouse cursor with the keyboard. And it does accelerate. Okay, good. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Okay, and then yeah, click left click, right click. Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> Next track, previous track. Uh play, I guess. Is that play? 
Yeah, play. Okay, play pause. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, it's, it's right next to the key you used to get layer two. So in practice, play pause is a matter of holding down your ring finger, then quickly tapping with pinky. Interesting. I like it. Okay. Yeah, this is going to completely change how I <laughs> completely change how I how I, how I use the computer. Um, hyper and meh. This is this is also interesting. So the hyper key is you hold down the hyper key and you're holding down. Um, Command, Option, Shift, and Control. All four modifiers. The I and, and then Meh is the same thing, except you don't have the Command key with it, or you know, Windows key if you're using it with, with, with Windows. Uh, you just have Control, Alt, and Shift with it. And the reason why they do this is so that you, it makes it very easy for you to do keyboard shortcuts that use a lot of modifier keys. No sane application is going to define a built-in shortcut that is, um, you know, Command, Option, Shift, Control, L. They're just not going to do it. That, that's too much for, for the average user to do. And they want it to be easier, so they start doing things like, you know, it's Command, L. Well, lots of that's do Command, L, so you can't use that for a global keyboard shortcut. So you start doing things like, well, okay, Command, Option, L. Maybe Command, Option, Shift, L. Um, and I do use a couple of apps where I'm, I'm running into keyboard, to conflicts like this. Uh, for example, uh, launch bar. I, I like bringing up launch bar with just command space. Well, by default, that brings up spotlight. So I've remapped spotlight to command shift space uh, for that to come up. Um, one password and launch bar also compete for one of the keyboard shortcuts. But I, I'm looking forward to being able to use hyper and meh to launch things like OmniFocus quick entry or uh, Fantastical quick entry, drafts, um, uh, card hop. You know, some of these apps that I, I, I have them up all the time. I want to be able to get to them quickly. But right now I, ha I have a lot of really weird keyboard shortcuts just so that they're not conflicting with any built-in keyboard shortcuts. So meh and Piper. Okay, cool. This, this will be fun. Um, yeah, looking forward to this. Make it pretty. Turn on the lights. Uh, oh, yes. You okay? This GIF is showing me what you can do, but I'm just gonna go back. I'm gonna go back here and try it out. Okay, let's go back to the desktop so you can see this. Okay, so wait, how do I get to layer one? I get hold here and go to layer one. Oh, oh, nice little blue light lights up. Yeah, you can see it here. So layer two is green light in the middle. Excellent. Okay. Okay, that's nice. You get some some feedback that you're you're switching to another layer. That's cool. Um, okay, so hold that down. And now oh, it just goes all okay, all red, all green, all blue. Okay, now hit this one and it starts doing some animation. No, that's not an animation. Oh, it's like stepping through an animation. Oh, cycling through something. Ah, ooh. You know what I want? I want, a, I want an animation so like when I hit a key, it like the keyboard ripples. That's what I want. Okay, so it's nice to know that you can play with the toys kind of just very, very quickly. Like that. Sure, we'll, we'll we'll leave it back at, 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 a, at a rainbow animation for now. Okay. <laughs> Golden, did you buy this keyboard just for the RGB? No, but it was a consideration. So let's see. Let's go back to. Let's go back to one hundred and one. Yeah, making turn on the lights, uh, customizing the firmware. So this, this, this is this. This is interesting. This is one of the things I think is really clever that they've done here. The The keyboard is a little computer. It's got an ARM chip in it. Um, it has, it, it's, it's a very smart peripheral. As you customize it, all of the customization that you do goes in the key, in the keyboard itself, physically in the keyboard. So it doesn't matter what computer you're using, 
you, you just plug it in and it you it's your setup. You don't have to customize this and you know customize software, install drivers on every computer that you use in order to get the same experience. Uh, that's very smart. It's the that's that's the right way to do this. So I'm I'm glad that they did it this way. Um, and I'm for now I'm just going to use their their web based um, configuration tool. I'm at some point I will probably check out QMK. Uh, the quantum mechanical keyboard firmware just to see what it's like because I, I'm a programming nerd. So, yeah, live training, they do recommend uh, that, yeah, you spend 10 minutes a day just practicing uh, to learn the new, new keyboard. Uh, we recommend training daily for the first three weeks using typing lessons from live training. Um, <laughs> I'm going back to school. Um, and then there there is an app that you can run that will that will, will have a little map for your for your keyboard. Uh, more information on how to customize it. One of the things that I was not sure about um, when you go to order it, you have to tell it tell them what kind of switches you want in in the keyboard. I have no idea. I mean, I've been using a um, you know I, I've, I've been using just a Magic keyboard for for years now. And I have no idea what kind of switches are in those. Uh, not the same kind of switches, I'm sure. But yeah, so I, I, I went down a rabbit hole researching that. Finally decided, settled on the Cherry MX Browns. Uh, I think they list those like they're the most popular. Because I, I don't want a super clicky sound because I, I, I don't want the noise. But there are times where I'm as I'm working on the computer, if I just kind of stop for a minute and I'm resting my hand on the keyboard, I will get accidental keystrokes just because my, my fingers are heavy enough. I'm, I'm accidentally uh, pushing things. So I switch it over. To, uh, so I, I'm, I am interested in some sort of, of pushback from there. So these are tactile, they call them tactile, uh, switches they're not clicky clicky means they're really noisy and you really have to hit them hard there are also linear optical switches that are just smooth and they don't really push back these are in between they're tactile they make a sound and so far let's see let me make sure that i'm in a browser window or something where i'm not going to hurt anything it has a good feel i don't know how well the sound picks up on that i'll it might be a little bit more than than what I like, but I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll try this out. The nice thing is because you can customize this so much, you can swap them out. Um, it's it's like thirty bucks, I think. If I if I decide I don't want this, I want to try a, a different kind of switch. Thirty bucks, I can swap it out. Marcus, hi Marcus, glad you could join us. Yes, I start things off by saying good morning. I thought, wait, should I say good morning? Because most of the world is going to be in, it's going to be afternoon or evening. But, well, no, on one hand, half of the, yeah, half of the world is is still in morning. Marcus, good to see you. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to, okay, let's hold this up close to the microphone. And it's, of course, it's also beeping because that's not a valid letter. No, nothing's valid right now. So it's a little bit noisy. Maybe I'll find it, you know, smoothie, smoothie. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna make a smoothie out of the keyboard. Uh, soothing, what was I trying to say? Good grief. Um, smooth and soothing, I don't know. Smoothing, maybe I added a word here. Um, you know, you know, a little bit of a retro nostalgia feel, but we'll see. We'll see how it is. It's going to be part of the learning curve, getting used to this new keyboard. Uh, not only do they put half the keys in the wrong place, but they make more sound than I'm used to. So anyway, um, yeah, they give you, go back to the, nope, not to the desktop. We go back to the, back to the web browser. Uh, yeah, they have instructions on how to, how to replace the switches, and yay, you're ready to fly. 
<laughs> Confetti. <laughs> oh, good. You can oh, you can you don't have to wait for one animation to end before you get more confetti. That's the way to do it. That makes me happy. <laughs> and remember, we're always just an email away. Write us at contact. Tisha, Robin, Mike, and Erez would love to hear from you. I've actually already been in touch with uh, with their customer service. So I originally, when I placed the order, I originally ordered a black, the black keyboard because one of one of the few things that that the reviews that, that that I was reading, one of the few things that they were saying negative about the keyboard was that well the the white one shows dirt. And I thought, oh, I don't I don't want that. I don't I don't want, I don't want the keyboard to show show dirt. Uh, so, I, so I ordered the black one, but then because I had watched a couple of videos about the the Moonlander keyboard, YouTube thought, "Oh, you must want to you must want to watch more videos about it." And so that night, it, they showed me, you know, I, I I had more more videos about this keyboard in my feed. Started watching more reviews, and I was looking at the white one, and I just thought, "You know, that, this just looks so nice." Everything else that kind of everything else that I've got here is white. Um, go back to the desk cam here for a second. Um, yeah, yeah, I've got, I, you know, I have the white keyboard. I actually do have the black keyboard from a, a, an earlier computer, but now everything's gone white. I've got this Anker um, charging station thing that's white. Um, if I could get a Stream Deck uh, in white, I would absolutely, I would love that. I would love to do a white. Um, a white stream deck. You can't see it, but well, you can see the, the the filing cabinet over here is white. The legs of the table are white. So I, I like the white aesthetic. Um, in fact, I also just got I've just got a white gaming mouse that's over there um, that I, I cleared out of the way, so I had more uh, more room to work with here. Um, yeah, I, I like the white, and so I thought, you know, if I made a mistake, I started second guessing myself. Um, and so I, I looked at it, and I, I on my desk I had both the the white um, Magic Trackpad or uh, Magic Keyboard as well as the black Magic Trackpad that I've got. Had them both on there, and I looked at it, and okay, yeah, on the white one I could see the dirt, and on the black one, nope, can't see the dirt. But even then, even on the the white keyboard, okay, I can see it, but it cleans off. And so I, I emailed customer support. You know, I got the order confirmation email, just hit reply and said, hey, I'm having second thoughts. Is it too late to switch over to the, to the white keyboard or do I need to cancel the order and place a new one? And they replied back overnight and said, oh yeah, no, 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 no problem. We'll switch over to the white keyboard. That's fine. So I got the white one. And it really does look amazing. This is, <laughs> this is nice. I like it. Marcus said... Yeah, seeing the dirt can motivate to clean it. So probably a plus. Yes, that thought did cross my mind. It's not that the white keyboard gets dirty and the black one doesn't. It shows you when it's dirty. It shows you when it needs to, when it needs to be cleaned. So yes, that is a plus. Absolutely, I will agree with you on that. So anyway, I've now, oh, oh, there we go. So, thanks for joining me. Uh, Marcus, good to see you. Uh, thanks for joining me. This is, <laughs> as, as, as I unboxed this keyboard, uh, it showed up on Wednesday, two days ago. Um, part of me wanted to open it up and tear right into it then, but I was working. I didn't really have time to, time to do it right then. So I figured I would wait. Um, I was taking the day off today. I knew I would have time that I could sit down and play with this today. So... <laughs> And I was right. I can. I have completely broken my brain. I am going to have to go back to square one and learn how to type all over again. But hopefully, this will be. Hopefully, this will be a one step back, two steps forward sort of situation. I consider myself a fairly accomplished typist. Um, I should take a baseline words per minute score uh, from the old keyboard before I start relearning everything on the new keyboard just to see how long it takes me to get back up to where I am and do I get do I get better um, am I able to type 
faster. Now, how much faster can I really type from this? I think really most of the win is going to is going to come not from speed, but just from comfort. Um, I'm going to be able to, you know, my hands are not going to wear out as quickly. I'm not going to get as tired from constantly holding my hands in a really weird position to type. <laughs> well, I buy the Vision Pro. Um, at some point, I'm sure I will. In fact, somebody yesterday pointed, <laughs> said, wait, you're doing an unboxing on February 2nd? You bought a Vision Pro. I'm like, well, no, I didn't. Um, not yet. If nothing else, I am making myself wait until uh, tax season's over and we've got uh, income taxes taken care of. I want to make things right with the KGB, uh, IRS, before uh, before I buy a, a, a fancy toy like that. I am intrigued by it. Uh, I'll put it that way. There, there it absolutely is part of me that, that wants to get one right now, but. I just bought a four hundred dollar keyboard. Yeah, I, I need to spread out the toys a little bit here. So, anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is this is going to be a fun a, a, a fun toy. I will I will keep you posted somehow on my journey here as as I get used to it. I'll I'll share updates um, at some point as <laughs> as I reach some sort of milestone. Um, I don't know when those will be, but. Yeah, it'll be fun. What's the most I don't know, what's the most fun tech toy that you've gotten recently to to play with? Try to do your do what you do a little bit better. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I am Coulter Reed. I'm here to help you get the day-to-day -day out of the way so you can stop chasing the dream and start living the dream. And yeah, if you want to know more, like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. This is YouTube, you know how it works. And yeah, I'll see you around. Until next time, stay sharp.